This is part one of EndNote for Mac. EndNote is referencing or bibliographic software. There are other softwares on the market like Zotero or Mendeley, but EndNote is considered the leader in the field. In this session, we're going to build and organize a library of references. In part two of the video, we'll put those into Word. We'll look at how you change your referencing style and talk about taking tender, loving care of EndNote and its references. We're going to build a Word document like this, which has embedded EndNote information into it. And let's move on. When you first become an EndNote user, you need to create a new library. If you're already an EndNote user, you should compress your library in case you accidentally alter something during this training. New users, we need a new library. Where you save it and what you call it is very important. Give it your name and put it in documents, maybe make a little folder called EndNote. You can maximize that little window and get ready to create your first manual reference. There's a button with a plus sign or you can go up to references, new reference. I've got an article in some training files by Cummings, comma, Christopher, L, press enter to enter Kuzma, comma, Jennifer, press enter again to add a corporate author, CSIRO, follow that by a comma. All the authors need to have a comma. It's a command to EndNote. The year was 2017 and I'm pressing tab on my keyboard to get me down to the next field. The title of the article was Societal Risk and I'm tired of typing so we're going to cheat later and paste in the long title. The journal is called PL little o s o n e. I'm using the capitals just as you would find in that journal. Volume 12 Issue 1, pages 1 24. Use that format because that's the format EndNote understands. If you have the DOI, certainly do add it. There's nothing better than being able to have the exact identifier for an article. We might put some keywords. I believe, in my opinion, this article is about synthetic biology. When you see red writing in some fields and black in others, the red fields are indexed. So next time you go to type synthetic, it's going to guess you want synthetic biology. It's going to do a bit of a predictive text thing so that it's trying to keep you to always using the same sorts of terms and not using different spellings and things as you go. Skip notes because that's what computers use. They use notes, but we use research notes. In this article, when I got to page two, I noticed it was had a mention of MCDA. If I put that in, I should be able to search for that later. In a couple of years, I'll say, gee, I wonder if I've got any articles with MCDA in them, and this should come up. And the only other field I'd fill in would be URL, if you have it. But I don't have it with me. I'll close this reference, should be able to get up the top, it's not wanting to go, come on reference, there we go. I'll close the reference and either it saves automatically or it asks you if you want to save. I did cheat on the title so I'll need to attach the PDF. Before I get carried away, Check your referencing style, APA 6. If you can't see it, you might want to change your layout to one where you can see that referencing style. 
My favourite layout is the bottom split. It gives me these four windows to work with. I've got my article highlighted. I can get the paperclip symbol and attach the PDF because I got my PDF from the training files that the librarians make available. I've put them on the desktop and looking for the Cummings article. There it is. Brilliant. Now I can copy and paste information like the abstract. Copy. So that title is the article title. Paste. Notice, oh, yep, that's looking good. Notice there are many different types of records that you make that you put in EndNote. This is a journal article, it's just standard. But you might be wanting to reference a Facebook post or a video or someone else's thesis. There's a, there's a long list. As you enter information, keep checking for quality. I notice a lot of capital letters here that I'm going to change. There is a button that helps you change the case of words. And if you come along to one of our trainings, you may see that in action. Looking good. I have to move off that record to see what effect it, my changes will make in the, the preview window. So I'll move on to unfiled, move back to all references. You find yourself going to all references all the time. That's your, your home base. And still can't see the change. So I actually will see it when I put a second record in. Then that save automatic save will happen. A second record, we're going to import an article by someone called Liam. We click File, Import. Look at the options. Make sure you're set to PDF file or folder and import into Duplicates Library. Now find the Liam article. Here it is. maybe 30 seconds for every import to come in. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in a moment when we do some more importing. Every time you put a record in EndNote, do your quality check. Does it look good? Oh, page, page number L21. A little odd, but if I look at the article, that is actually what it's called. So if you do see something you want to change, do it as soon as possible. I'm happy with that record. I'll go back to all references. And that first one has now updated. In the preview window, I can see the full title of the article. Let's import some more because that was fun. File, import. Those option settings usually stay that way. You don't have to keep specifying. Let's bring in this whole folder called PDFs Open Access. Open Access is a copyright term. It means we can use it in training and such. Keep in mind I said it may take 30 seconds for each of these 14 PDFs to come in. So if you've been storing a thousand PDF articles on your computer in one folder, Here's your opportunity to bring them in, but it might take 30 seconds for each one. 30 seconds is a bit of a general, uh, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but you certainly may have to go off and make a cup of coffee while you wait for that to go through. Fantastic. When you do a file import like this, you get the paper clip, you get the actual PDF. That's what's great about the import. When you import, not only do you get that, but it types up what we librarians call the metadata here on the left. So cleaning up as we go along, changing capital letters to small letters, if that's what they do in the discipline that you study. M 
Don't forget you've got to move off for the changes to take effect. So you keep tidying as you go. There seems to be a bit of a major problem with one of them. Now I think it was because there's no DOI, there's no unique identifier on the front page of this article. So I'm going to have to copy the title and make sure that's selected and paste it in the article title. And so on. Might do the author by hand because the surname has to go first. Southers, comma, Roderick, A. Continue like that till you've got all the important data in, all the things that you'd expect to see in a reference in an assignment or thesis, in a reference references list. What else do we need to do to our EndNote library? How about we go on the web and get some more records? There are so many out there to be had. We go over to a browser. On our library's web page, we have some A to Z databases. And let's just use one of the most popular ones, ProQuest. Do any search you like, but most of my things in EndNote are, are about bats. Select a couple of records. I really like the sound of these dog-faced bats, fishman bats, and so on. That's, that intrigues me. So select the ones that you want to appear in EndNote. Click the Save with the floppy disk. And find the RIS option. You'll need to scroll down, usually, to see the Continue button. And depending which browser you used, will depending on the browser you use will mean it opens in different ways. Here it's asking me in where it wants to wants the RS file to open. I'm going to make sure it opens in the one that I call Jane. You'll remember me naming that. Beautiful, and in they come, but there's no paper clip. They don't actually bring in the PDFs. I haven't made a database yet that can bring in the PDF and the metadata at the same time. That's what the import function is for. While we're here, do have a look at the URLs. Now that's going to look really ugly in your assignment. So you might want to find a friendly URL and a librarian can teach you how URLs can be uh, made a little more tidy. I'll go back to all references. That was ProQuest. How would Google Scholar handle that? Let's have a look. Go back to the library's homepage. Behind our purple search box is our Google box. Uh, what, what might I do that's a bit different? Bats and environment. Bit of a general sort of term. Could mean various things. There are a couple of ways to get information from Google Scholar into EndNote. One is the site button, which looks like a quotation mark. There's a link called EndNote. And again, it's saying, where do you want me to open this? I want you to open it it's on the desktop. No, sorry, it's in Documents in Jane, in an EndNote library called Jane. Again, you don't get the PDF attached. It's a two-part process. You need to go and get the, end, uh, the PDF and join it up with the little attach symbol. Go back to all references and keep an eye on quality. Keep an eye on what's that going to look like in your references list. Fix up any problems as soon as possible. What if you do see a problem? You can. I can see some more uh, capital letters up here that would 
need changing you can fix them in the little edit window or you can double click to open it out and if anything needs retyping you can do that and I think I'll just stop there to save time and remember I've got mine saved to uh, it auto saves everything there is no file save up the top left it's, it, that's not a thing the save a copy I've never used it so EndNote saves every time you do something every time you move on to the next record it saves what if you had to delete something don't make up your own commands like don't say oh, I think command X will get rid of that either right click and use a menu option like move references to trash or go up the top references is there a reference to the moving it to trash there is I think I'll do that one and it's down in the trash that's a good place for it to be in case you change your mind you can actually reinstate it back into your library you bring up the menu and you have a look for the option back to all references my library is growing I have 18 18 things and one in the trash very quickly now I know how to use databases this very quickly could become a library of a thousand items we need to put some organization into it and that's why librarians teach EndNote I'm going to go up the top to groups and I'm going to create my first group called chapter one I know a lot of our PhD students they type up this thesis in separate documents called chapters and then they carefully put them all together when the thesis is just about done saves them a lot of scrolling you can imagine something like 80,000 words scrolling through that so I might want my records to reflect what my thesis would look like as you get many many chapters and things you want to start sorting those out so we might make a group set for them to sit in my group set will be called thesis and I actually have to put the chapters in there that's it might make another group set for say my hobbies because I just like reading about astronomy and in in hobbies I might want one on physics move that down to hobbies beautiful we need to get some of those articles in there go back to all references start dragging them in when I go to write chapter one I'm going to use that one and that one I'm going to use that dog faced one again when I get to chapter two and I haven't got anything for my hobbies yet so when I go to write chapter two I can go here and go that's right I was going to use that great Krauss article fantastic and look oh yeah now it's time to write chapter two there's a link that will take me to the the article online if I haven't already attached it to this record we've built a nice small EndNote library it's time to ensure we don't lose it we go up to file compressed library you might remember I mentioned that at the beginning for those of you that already have EndNote libraries what we're doing is we're making a backup I'll click OK and we're saving a copy somewhere safe in case something should happen to EndNote give it a better name I like to call it compressed EndNote library and the month June 2019 I 
decompress my EndNote library about once a month. If you're prolifically researching, if you're researching a lot, you might need to do it every couple of days. It's totally up to the individual how often you compress your EndNote library. But if you come to visit me and you bring your laptop and I ask to see your compression and you haven't got one, it's not going to fill me with a lot of hope. The compression is your insurance policy if something bad happens. I've made a little folder that all my compressions go into and that one can join it. So if I did something stupid like delete half of them and then wake up in the night and go, oh, look, I've emptied the trash, they're gone, I may have to go back to the last compression that I did. You also want to get those compressions off this computer onto somewhere safe, such as an external hard drive, but at a minimum a USB, but better to put it on something a bit more stable, such as a, an external hard drive. And I say that because more than once I've seen USBs in, a car, in car parks and they've been run over by cars. They fall out of pockets, fall out of handbags and briefcases. They're not a great place to be storing your information and then walking around with it. So you want that compression somewhere safe. We don't use the cloud, we don't use iCloud or Dropbox because EndNote is a series of files and folders and somewhere like iCloud or Dropbox actually reorganises the files so it makes more sense or saves more space for them and that's bad news for EndNote. We're going to get ready for part two, and what we're going to do is put away this EndNote library, close library, and do a little tidying, because we're going to use Microsoft Word. So in EndNote, we're going to open a library from the training files that we've put on the desktop, a library called Sample Library X9 ENL. Maximize it. It has 66 records and we're going to use a Word document also from the training files that I give out. See if I start at desktop, training materials, manuscript. We're going to get the EndNote library called Sample Library and a Word document called Manuscript, get them to talk to each other. And that's in the next video.